My next guest is an Emmy winner and Tony nominee who has performed in four different languages in over 45 countries. She now stars in a solo stage production of Great Expectations here in New York. Please welcome back to The Late Show, Eddie Izzard. <laughs> Nice to see you. Very good to be here. Now, the last time we were together was 2017. Yep. And at the time, if you remember, you said within four to five years, and it has been five years, you would be running for parliament. Yeah. And you are one of your word because on Sunday you had your primary election. Yeah. Here's a pamphlet. This proves you're running for office. Yes. But now, we should add to this. Primary, primary was Sunday. How did it so, go? Sorry, uh, I didn't get it. I came second. But it's called the great people uh, in the city of Sheffield. Sheffield is a steel city. Yes, and people who know Sheffield in tonight, you may not know Sheffield so well, I don't but know it's Sheffield. got a big heart. It's got great people, great character. It was a steel city, then the steel industry kind of went away from, yes. from Britain, and they've reinvented themselves, high energy, uh, high uh, engineering uh, jobs, and two great universities, a lot of great talent there. So, um, yeah, I still... It's where I went to. When I went to my... Degree when I was uh, doing accounting and financial management when I was a kid, and someone was there as well who remembers my degree. You have an accounting degree? Well, I dropped, something to fall back on. I dropped out after one year, just like Steve Jobs and Bill Gates did. Um, Very similar. That's the group I've Very shoved myself similar. in. Well, I knew I wanted to perform. How, when did you know you wanted to perform? Well, what, what when I ended up being the youngest of 11 children. That's when I found Oh, right, yes, okay. Exactly. Well, there was I, always an audience there. Seven so. years old. Mama died when I was six. Seven years old. Oh. I lost the, the love and affection of mom, and suddenly there was an audience giving out love and affection. I said, I think I need that. And it, and it just locked in. And then I had to pretend, that, yes, I'll go to university, but I was never going Did to... Did you get it? Did you get that? Because a lot of people... I, lo I lost my father and a couple of my brothers when I was quite young, and, and that actually led me to, like, try to keep my mom happy. That was sort of the beginning of my performance for me, I think, when I was around 10. But... Did did you then, did that supplant that love or did that feed that missing piece of you sincerely, I mean? Or was it like a ghost know. you were chasing? I think it was a ghost I was chasing. I've tried to do amazing things. You know, I've been running lots you of multiple marathons things. and stuff yeah. and performing, in, as you said, in multiple languages. And, and I, I, in my documentary that, uh, that was done on me, it was, it was about trying to do enough so that maybe mum could could see that stuff was happening that was different and she could see from beyond, you know, wherever. But I unfortunately don't think, you know, I, oh. I think mum's gone. And, uh, but she's in here and I'm trans. I'm not trans because of mum, you know. I, I was just trans before that. I knew when I was about four or five. So, uh, yeah, but I've just tried to live a positive life, open, being honest, being out for 37 years, uh, acting and doing stand-up comedy, which are quite different things, you know? Very much so. But I never did stand-up. I admire people who've done it because it seems like a bit of a lonely thing at times. It can... Yeah, I think it can be. I'm, I'm quite happy out there because I feel I'm with the audience because I'm talking... In my stand-up, I'm talking complete nonsense about pigs in space and playing banjos and stuff, and the audience is there, and we're, it's like that everyone's come into my room and we're all just playing around. In drama, it's a different thing, like... The Dickens is a drama. It's not a comedy. It's well, let's, great, let's get to that right here. What we've got right here is that you are also, uh, besides running for office, yes, and yes, I yes. do want to ask you about that in just, yeah, a, no, in just no. a moment, about that, but you are also uh, at the Greenwich House Theatre here downtown in New York. You are doing a one-person adaptation of the Dickens classic Great Expectations. Yeah. Okay, so I... <laughs> Dickens fans. A lot of Dickens fans yeah. here tonight. Well... People have already been... Patrick Stewart has been doing um, uh, Christmas Carol. A number of people have been doing Christmas Carol. Simon sure. Callow in Britain. Um, so the idea of doing solo shows has happened before. It's just the interesting thing on this is that I'm using Richard Pryor's stand-up technique, which has infused my stand-up, which is mul Well, Richard used to do this thing. If you watch Richard Pryor live, sure you can see is. him... I think it's talking about two African-American guys going, going hunting. Yeah. And one guy going, hey, OK, you give me the gun. He says, well, I haven't got the gun. You haven't got the gun? Where's the gun? Blah, 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 blah. And it's this talking of, of two characters, slightly different voices, different postures, different attitude, talking to each other with this sort of quarter turn. Yes. And so I thought, I like that. I'll do... I come from sketch comedy. I'll do that in my stand-up. So I've done it all over my stand-up. And then I realised uh, with the Dickens, I could do it in the Dickens dramatically. So I have Estella, Miss Havisham, and Pip all talking to each other with this thing where I change the attitude, the voice, and I just get all the characters talking to each other that way. Sometimes up to five, five or six characters. Do you ever get confused? Uh, yes, all the time. Um, <laughs> no, on stage, I mean. No, on I... Stage, uh, yes, yes, yes exactly. in life. Um, well, man, let's, let's come on, let's sell some tickets, let's build expectations 
for this. Build great expectations for this. Okay. Yes. So, how great are these expectations? The expectation. Well, do you, you want me to tell them the story of yes, how it goes? Please, if you yes. don't know the story, it's, it, it's kind of a... Well, it's a rags-to-riches story of a little kid who was growing up as an apprentice to a, a blacksmith, and he gets given all this money. He doesn't know who it's from. He thinks it's from a rich lady who lives in a... cranky old lady who lives up in a house who has a beautiful adopted daughter, but it isn't, and he becomes this guy who's throwing money left, right and centre. He thinks money's going to make him happy. It doesn't in the end. And, and he learns the lessons, and he, and he tries to become a decent human being by the end of the story. It's one of his more advanced stories, his later stories, and it's, um, <clears throat> it's, it's, a, great, it's a great epic. Well, I, I, I want to I wanna ask you back about this politics for just, just one yeah. second here. Because you have politics in your country, too. We do I have politics noticed. here. And I don't want to talk about politics in my country other than the fact, other than this... You have a, a successful career. Yes. You make things better for people by doing your comedy. As you said, you're not alone, they're not alone because they're with you in the theater. Why do you want to do politics? Have you spent time with these people? What? Because <laughs> I admire people who are trying to do the right thing. I just meet so few of them. Well, Is your politics different than our politics? No, it's the same thing. I mean, you, there are certain, politi certain politicians, in inverted commas, you've turned up, who decided that they could do lying instead of you know, telling the truth. And you've got a, a Donald Trump on your side, and we had a Boris Johnson on our side, the Tweedledum and Tweedledee of, <laughs> of pants-on-fire politics. Yes. You know? And... It kind of attracts people who have personality, who have ego, but just decide, I'm just going to lie my way through the whole of this. Mm -hmm. And it appeals to certain people because they appeal to a certain base. And I, I'm a radical but a moderate. I do radical things. Right? Radically moderate? Yeah, well, I, I run 130 marathons, but I'm making money for charities in Britain and around the world. That's pretty moderate in intention, but it's a sure. radical thing to do. I mean, in South Africa, I did 27 marathons in 27 days for Nelson Mandela. That's out there, but, you know, it's a beautiful thing and salutes Nelson Mandela. How are your knees? My knees are fine, bizarrely. I don't know why, but they... I, my knees keep going. Are you still running? Yeah, yeah, oh, yes. I'm going to keep doing marathons forever until I forever. shuffle off. Well, I can do... Not, after death, it's going to be harder, but maybe someone can push <laughs> me around. They could push me around. Rub the ashes on them and then <laughs> yeah, they run around. But I, I, I you know, I, so this is... I, I believe I have energy, I have analysis. You know, I came out as trans 37 years ago trying to show leadership and say, I'm trying to make a space for myself, and if anyone else is thinking I'm trans and they want to come up, maybe they say, I'm like, a bit like that person, and so we could move forward, because we weren't... It, no one was even discussing trans back in 85 when wow. I came out. Well, I'd like to think of myself as a bit like Eddie Izzard. Well, good. In a positive way of, a of positive trying way, things yes. different ways, yeah. pushing out the... Yeah, because there's a number of us who are out there trying to make... We're trying to get ourselves in a good place, and then trying to reach out. Can we help anyone else? Can we help bring people up, you know, mm. make connections rather than break them? Uh, can we learn from you? Can you learn from us? That's my politics. So I'm just going to keep pushing until I get into Parliament, and then I can keep trying to make things better for people. Eddie, <laughs> lovely to see you. Thank you. Great Expectations begins tomorrow at the Greenwich House Theatre here in New York. Eddie is it, everybody. We'll be right back with the performance.